I had a great uh, question coming under the comments from Kai Creative. Kai asked the question, what's the best way of packing for international travel? And as you can see, I am prepped and ready to help answer your question. Um, Kai, it depends very much on what it is that you're shooting and the circumstances and reasons behind your travel. But I'm going to try and answer this in a way that hopefully will benefit as many of us as possible. Um, I shoot photo and video and I have travelled with tons and tons of gear uh, with a number of different bags and different solutions for different reasons. The first thing to make sure that you do when you travel uh, for photo or video is make sure that you have your key and most important kit and equipment on your person on your person. That means hand luggage. What can happen when you travel is that a suitcase can, God forbid, can go missing. It's a terrifying thing um, and I've had it happen to me a number of times. Fortunately, most of the times it has been a delay rather than an entire loss. But I have had a bag turn up the day after we've landed on more than one occasion and that fills you with absolute fear. So make sure that you have the key items in your hand luggage. So for me, um, I tend to travel with a roller bag when I'm traveling and, and flying with my key uh, in most important kit. And it's because I don't personally like having really heavy pieces of equipment being carried on my, on my back. Police car's gone. Okay, it's fine. I'm still here. I'm not arrested. Um, in this bag, make sure that you have your camera. Make sure that you have your most important key lenses. Now you might find that you've got five or six lenses that you would like to travel with you. Absolutely, fine, transport them, carry them, but make sure that if you can only fit a certain number of kgs in your hand luggage, that the most important lens that you need to get the job done is in that bag. I want you to imagine that your bag or suitcase is gonna go missing and the only equipment that you carry or have with you is the equipment that you have on your person in your hand luggage. What could you not do without? For me, it's the camera, it's memory cards, it's the batteries, and it's also a battery charger. Do not forget the battery charger. Imagine you traveled out and you're gonna be there for a week and you're shooting and your battery dies and you've only had one or two batteries. The battery charger has to be inside your hand luggage with you. Um, and then it might be any key microphones, um, et cetera, et cetera. Make sure it's in there. Uh, when you travel with your hand luggage, one, most, one really important thing to make sure of is that you choose an airline that has the appropriate hand luggage restriction, restrictions, or in our case, it's the most appropriate hand luggage requirements. So for us here in the UK, we have British Airways. I know that British Airways will give us 23 kgs inside a hand luggage. 23 kgs is normally something that would be more associated with a full-size suitcase. But in hand luggage, that is as much as I can lift. And in fact, that's in the small print. It says that you must be able to pick up your bag and you must be able to lift it into the overhead luggage. The truth of the matter is I often have someone with me and I get a little bit of help um, when I'm doing that. But if you travel with the wrong airline, what you will find happens is that you go to check in and they tell you that you only have eight kgs. The freaking bag might weigh three or four kgs and that leaves me with a body and a battery. I've got no freaking lens, right? And I still need to shoot. Most of the time I have a really kind of, I, I work it and I try and make sure that I can get through the security. Of course, I'm not breaking the law, but just uh, to be clear, I do everything I can to make sure that I, uh, I get checked in. And I'm gonna do a bit of role play here, okay? Stay there. Imagine I've got a passport as well. Suitcase comes in. And I make sure they see the suitcase. Hi, how are you doing? Watch this, right? Hand luggage slid in very, very carefully. Oh, yeah, that's good, no problem. Here's my, in fact, as I'm doing that, it's, hi, how are you doing? Yeah, I've got my suitcases here. My passport is here. Yeah, no problem. Look at the passport, look at the passport, look at the passport. Look at the passport. And this is hid down here. All right, they're no longer focusing on the size of my hand luggage bag, which normally they go, oh, photographer or official person, he, the hand luggage is gonna weigh a lot. Can, I, can you please weigh it? So sometimes um, I'm doing the magician's trick of look over here, look over here, look over here, hoping that they don't focus on the bag. 
That for me is a worst case scenario. Normally, I'm choosing my airline specifically so that I can travel with as much hand luggage as possible. Also check in the details for hand luggage. Often what you will find with some airlines is that you can travel with a carry-on bag and you can also carry a laptop bag or a personal bag. Um, so instead of it being a little personal man bag, I have another bag that clips on the top. So sure, I've got a think tank bag here that's been pushed all over the world, is ratted and tattered, uh, but has survived the test of time in all sorts of countries and conditions. But on the top, um, over the handle, this bag goes straight over. And of course, it's got a lot of weight in there um, that I'm carrying lenses, key items. So just check, you might find that this will really help you out because they're weighing this not weighing this and um, or maybe your laptop you can take the laptop out as you check in because often they will count the laptop as a separate item the other thing they don't weigh they don't weigh you they don't weigh you right so what i do if i'm at risk of having too much equipment and if you've ever traveled with me you'll know this sometimes i'm wearing combats and i've got pockets and pockets and inside i've got pockets and pockets and what i'm doing is i'm tucking lenses inside my freaking clothes and i'm like this all right i look fat but it's not fat i'm just full of kit and gear and in my pockets i've got another lens with another battery with a charger and i'm loaded fully down and i put my hand luggage on top of the uh, weighing belt and of course it says eight kgs thank you mr quarry you can walk now through then of course when i go around the corner i take everything back out again and i return my body weight to normal size and i'm good to go um, so uh, that's definitely something that you can do if you need to there are times when my hand luggage would be a, um, uh, a rucksack, uh, particularly if I'm traveling to a country whereby I don't want to leave my kit on the floor. If I'm shooting as a solo shooter, I, um, I cover this in another uh, blog post. If I'm traveling as a solo shooter and I'm shooting with a camera in my hand, I want to make sure that my kit is strapped to me. I don't want to put my roller bag on the floor, be shooting by myself, uh, and then someone snatches my bag with all my cameras, all my lenses and everything else except for the main body I've got on my person. Then I would be screwed. Then I would be stuck. So rucksack, important in that circumstance. Let me just put this respectfully back. Um, when I'm traveling abroad, I also carry a very large bag. I'm sometimes traveling um, with two suitcases. If I'm traveling business class, which I occasionally get to do, it's the way I like to travel. Um, but I'm, yeah, I'm economy class a lot of the time. But if I can travel business class, I get a suitcase and I get one of these big babies full of kit. But I will also often carry um, a mule. I would call respectfully a mule. This may be a non-trained, non-professional person who really wants to come with me on the production for the experience, okay? Maybe it's an intern type of person. But what I'm doing is I'm getting them on board to help me with the kit and the luggage. They're getting a free trip to whatever part of the world and some experience and some training, but I'm getting their luggage allowance. One suitcase for clothing, and of course a tripod and a monopod or two, and another suitcase full of kit and equipment that I tend to take responsibility for. Um, and when I'm traveling, I'm either traveling with something like this. This is a thick think tank production manager. Um, these are great. They're very strong, very robust. I have no problem strapping this to the top of, uh, you know, a, a vehicle when I'm traveling in, uh, in, in Africa or Dubai or some other part of the world. And it's also very, very strong. So if this gets pushed down by other suitcases, I, I put valuables in there with no problem whatsoever. I'm happy with that. Um, when I say I put valuables in here, I am cautious. Remember that the insurance that a, an airline provides is normally only a few hundred pounds. Um, if you have an expensive lens in here and the bag goes missing or the bag gets damaged and you open up the bag and your lens is damaged, as happened to me when I traveled to India, took out my 70 to 200, my 70 to 200 was dented, it was broken, it was unusable, didn't panic, why? I cried a little bit, sure, but I didn't panic because in my hand luggage, remember the first lesson, have the most important items in your hand luggage. I had the lens that I needed there, but the lens that I kind of wanted and I wanted as extra was damaged um, in um, another suitcase. The 
Insurance that came from the airline did not cover the lens. Yep, didn't cover it. Make sure, lesson that I learned over 10 years ago, that your own insurance covers your equipment and covers travel. So if something happens when you are traveling or you are in transit, you're not phoning up the airline, asking them to cover 10,000 pounds of equipment. And they go, uh-uh, no, I'm gonna give you 350 pounds. And then you don't cry, you break down and you have a nervous panic attack. You don't want that. So I use one of these babies. However, there are times when this big, massive Manfrotto high roller bag uh, comes into comes into play comes into action the great thing about this bag is I can fit full light stands in here uh, and tripods uh, any light stands around no um, I'm using them all um, these light stands that fit in here and um, the 1004 from Manfrotto go up 12 foot high right 12 foot high and they fit in this bag along with sliders and all sorts of other bits and bobs um, so this bag can be essential when I'm traveling. The other thing that I tend to do is inside my suitcase um, or bags of my clothing, I also pack another bag. So if I don't travel out with a rucksack on my person, I may decide to pack a bag inside a bag, but that bag that's packed inside a bag is fully packed with things. Does that, does that make sense? Um, so, it means that when you get to the location, you can take out that other bag and you find that you've got you know, a few other bits and bobs that you can help to carry around equipment with you without being weighed down and moving around too many trolleys. When you go through customs, um, the trick is, is, is if you're traveling as a tourist, which I often do, I travel on a tourist visa, I am cautious just to make sure that the money I'm earning is not from the country which I am traveling to. But regardless, if they see you as a professional, they often get a bit excited. And it happened to me, I traveled to India on a shoot, I had lots and lots of equipment with me, I got to customs and they said, excuse me sir, could you open your bag please? I went, sure, no problem. I actually had a correct visa, right? I still had a correct visa that told me I was gonna be, told them I was gonna be shooting. But they got excited. They said, uh, Mr. Quarry, how much is your equipment worth? And I told them, uh, the equipment here probably about 30 grand. I was like, yeah, 30 grand's worth of equipment. And they went, Mr. Quarry, you are importing all of this equipment. And therefore, you are liable for the tax associated with importing the equipment. And my face just went, oh. uh, Mr. Quarry, could you please give us 4,000 pounds? And I went, the thing that saved me was I had a correct visa in that circumstance. Though there are those times when I do travel on a tourist visa, it's deemed appropriate. I sweat a little bit as I go through customs. Um, but the key thing is, if you get in that situation, don't tell them that you have 30,000 pounds of equipment. Play it down. Make sure that they realize the equipment you have is second hand and is not to be sold within the country. And if you do get stuck, suggest to them that you write a list of the equipment inside a, a sticker from them inside your passport. And when you come back out the other side again, you will agree to tick off these items one by one. If you really think you're gonna get stuck, do it the official way and make sure you get a carnet form, um, which is a form that declares everything you're bringing into the country for ingress in and then out of the country again. Fortunately, so far, I've never needed to do that. Um, so uh, I've always been able to travel without it. But just know that if you are going to travel with a lot of equipment, there is a way to do it. And if you are one of those big, humongous production companies and you're in the middle of shooting a movie, do not try and get all of the equipment on a commercial flight. Instead, use a freight uh, company to get, a cargo company to get all of your equipment in the proper place. You will probably have a talented producer like we do, with Chris uh, and you will fill in all the necessary documentation and then when you arrive at your location it should all be there and ready for you to go. But if you are doing it on uh, a, you know, a small, you wanna go out there, you wanna shoot, maybe you're shooting for a production company, you're shooting a bit indie, a little bit guerrilla, know that, pack reasonably, uh, make sure that you look appropriate. On, on that note, that's one of the things I like about this rucksack. It doesn't scream at you professional photographer, it screams at you, backpacker, right? Um, same with these bags, they don't necessarily scream at you, um, professional, professional. Um, 
The Peli case is awesome because it is designed to travel freight cargo um, or you know, expensive equipment inside the hold. I would have no problem, no problem at all, putting this inside um, a hold for baggage and knowing that this was safe with all of my equipment. It's fine with all of my equipment inside, all right? Because this Peli, even though it's a Peli Air, which means it's exceptionally light and exceptionally strong, um, it's gonna hold it. The thing I always have to be careful of, depending on where I'm traveling, would they look at this and think, oh my gosh, this guy is a professional. And, and then as a result, they start to ask, ask certain questions. For me, with the majority of times with the way I travel, traveling with something like this is not gonna be a problem. It's perfect for the job, but it's just something that depending on the nature of the country you're traveling to, because some countries, let's be honest, some countries um, have a fairly corrupt infrastructure and what they are looking for is they are looking for the person that stands out, um, the potential business person, the person who doesn't fit in the environment and they single you out and they try and make some extra money. So make your decisions for packing based on the location that you're traveling to and also the nature of your shooting and the production that you're carrying out. Those are my thoughts. Thank you very much for joining us on this YouTube channel, the Simeon Quarry channel. Would you please, if you like this video, could I ask you to like it? Then I know what subjects you're liking more than others. If there's something you would like me to cover inside another YouTube vloggy thingy bobby, would you leave it inside the comments? Uh, and if there is any other kind of ideas, suggestions you have on this subject, then I'd love to hear from you because it's not just about me giving my thoughts and ideas, it's about us sharing and also exchanging our thoughts. I'm signing out, people. See you later. <laughs>